This is Optimal Relationships Daily, episode 915, How My Child Survived Me as a Parent, by Dr. Margaret Rutherford of drmargaretrutherford.com. Hello, everybody. This is Greg Audino speaking, your host and narrator here on Optimal Relationships Daily. We have arrived at the end of the week before taking a break for a couple of days, but we'll be going out strong with yet another post from the ever-informative and introspective Dr. Margaret Rutherford. Today's post will serve as a really great teaching moment for parents, even though it may not seem like that right away. Let's hop right in today and see what she's got for us and start optimizing your life. How My Child Survived Me as a Parent by Dr. Margaret Rutherford of drmargaretrutherford.com I thought it was about the ponies, and it was one of those parenting memories that I would rather forget. A four-year-old birthday party at the local lovely Wilson Park. My son Rob, bursting out of his car seat with excitement. The birthday party, a child's version of the dream vacation. Cake, friends from school actually seen on a Saturday, running around, screaming, bouncing, chasing, sliding. Ponies were there to ride. I saw the sign. Ponies, here from 1 o'clock to 1.30. Rob, do you want to ride the ponies first? They're only here for the next 30 minutes. Why, I thought a four-year-old squealing at the sight of the birthday boy was paying attention to me, I will never know. Not now, and he sped off. A few hellos later, I called to my now ruddy-cheeked, laughing all over everywhere son. Rob, time to ride ponies. Just a minute, mommy. He was having a great time. So I let it go. Big mistake. Suddenly, I looked up. The ponies were being led to their trailers. Could you wait a minute, please? My son hasn't gotten a chance to ride. Sorry, ma'am. We've got another party to go to. I saw him running. He had seen the impending departure as well. Mommy, I want to ride the ponies now. His hazel eyes were filling with tears. Rob, I'm so sorry. They have to go. What followed next was a torrent of emotion that I had never witnessed. He was inconsolable. He sunk down on the curb, head bowed, shoulders shaking. I reached out to comfort him. His little head raised suddenly and split my lip wide open. Blood spurted everywhere. I had become Mount Vesuvius. Others were watching this scenario with empathy. My ever-present self-conscious self whispered only disdain, of course. Look at the psychologist. Not only did she not manage the time so her dear sweet son could ride the ponies, now she's bleeding all over him. Mmm, tisk tisk. Someone came over and offered Kleenex, for Rob and for my lip. He was so upset I could not calm him down. I thought I might need stitches. I made the decision to leave, swooping the still sobbing Rob up in my arms. Very quick thank you to the host mom, who stared at my swelling bloody face. No. Go, I completely understand. Probably thanked her lucky stars that we exited the scene. I didn't need stitches, not even plastic surgery, and Rob calmed down after we got home. I promised a pony ride soon. Fast forward, 14 years later. I was laughing about the event with the same son, all grown up, reminiscing about the particular domino effect of ponies, tears, and lips. Mom, I wasn't crying about the ponies. What? I I didn't understand. How could it not be about that? It wasn't about the ponies at all. It was about, at that moment, I realized you could not fix everything for me. You could not make the ponies turn around. You weren't all powerful. I was floored. I had completely missed it. The deeper meaning of that moment for my son. It made all the sense in the world and actually made the intensity of his reaction much more understandable. And wow, just wow. You never know what children are thinking, what they are processing, what their tears might be about. You might not know who your child is becoming right in front of you. It's a good thing to remember that their perspective is completely different than yours, and that your actions are having a tremendous effect on them, whether you are aware of it or not that every child is learning how to handle complicated feelings and thoughts. It makes me wonder how he survived other things. When I found out that he could roll over because he had fallen out of this changing table. When I forgot that I had stored my face cleaner in a plastic baby medicine bottle, 
delivered a teaspoon to him, believing it was liquid ibuprofen, until I smelled the alcohol in it. And I watched him like a hawk all night, sure that I might have killed him. He slept well. When I way overcompensated for my mother's overprotectiveness, didn't notice the danger as he was racing down our driveway on his trike and hitting the concrete wall, giggling with glee, until I saw the horror on my aunt's face. Don't you think he needs a helmet? She asked, somewhat timidly. I paled, rushed out to slam the thing on his surprised little head. Probably did that overcompensation thing more than once. No telling how he processed all that. Mental relapses, plain old mistakes, good decisions thrown in there. What I learned is that he probably doesn't remember it like I do. It meant something different to him than me. One of these days I'll have to ask him. Now he's grown at college. He doesn't need me to fix his problems, just some advice from time to time. That's a good thing. Sometimes I still wish I could fix things. Make the ponies come back. You just listened to the post titled, How My Child Survived Me as a Parent, by Dr. Margaret Rutherford of drmargaretrutherford.com. Really a meaningful and touching post from Dr. Margaret today. Perhaps a refreshing reminder to parents that, yeah, even psychologists don't have the whole parenting thing completely figured out all the time. I love the commentary here on the complexities of children and how, yeah, we don't always know how they're processing things. What's more important than always knowing, though, is always supporting. While Margaret might have had a false understanding of what her son was going through, she still supported him and did not scold him, even when there was bloodshed. So this situation would have been far more traumatizing and lasted much longer beneath the surface had she started to shame him and discourage him from feeling whatever it was he was feeling. But she didn't do that. She let the situation play out. She tried to do her best that time and next time. And years later, she and her son can laugh about it and he can relay the memory fondly because his feelings were not stifled. Indirectly, a fantastic display of parenting by Dr. Margaret there. And with that, it is time to wrap things up for today. Thank you so much for joining me all week, everybody. I'm wishing you all a great nearly spring weekend. Enjoy yourselves, get outdoors, and be sure to come on back on Monday where I'll be back with you with a new roundup of content for the week and where your optimal life awaits.